Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is one of the big problems. When you're a journalist and you start to work on a new topic, you have to research it, and there's just so much information out there from so many sources and so many different modalities. You have text, you have video, you have everything, and you just need to try to go through all of it and understand it, and that's a real challenge. Now, there's search engines out there. There's uh, Google, obviously. You have Google News. You have other like Bing, and they give you a lot of information, but mostly they work with text, and they work with the public uh, data that's out there. Now, if you work, want to work with different kinds of data, like video, or you work with your own archives, then things become a lot more complicated. So really, when you work with video, you need to actually look into it. You need to see what people are saying in the video. You need to know the people who appear in the video. You need to analyze it to make sense of what's being said, so have kind of a semantic interpretation of it. And the solution to this, uh, unsurprisingly, is what we've been working on for the last three years in the EUMC project, which is a European project with seven partners uh, throughout Europe. And that's a system that should help make this all much easier. The idea is to just integrate with the workflow that the journalist has. Just allow the journalist to start writing their article and then get contextual information based on that. So they can just click on a button and then the system will automatically get related content for them, get background information and help them with what they're doing. As you can see here, uh, it automatically highlights uh, detected entities that are linked to Wikipedia. It gets uh, related content, so based on the text that the journalist is writing, it automatically finds videos, news articles, tweets, etc., that have to do with that. And uh, you can then also use those highlighted entities to directly go to the Wikipedia pages, get background information. Uh, from there, so you have a very direct access without having to go to different sources. You don't have to go to a search engine. You don't have to go to Wikipedia. It's just all there, right one click away. And then, of course, journalists also want to have control so you can actually filter things. You can use all those things that are highlighted to filter, so you can find articles that just talk about one specific, that really need to mention one specific thing, so you narrow down your search. You also have suggested key phrases, or you can manually enter search terms to narrow down your search and dig into it. It helps you with navigating the videos by uh, allowing you to jump right in, so you can and go right to a part of the video where based on the automatic speech transcript it finds what you're interested in. You can navigate by the people that appear in the video with the face detection so you can easily jump around even in longer videos to find what you're really interested in. There's a variety of visualizations like a map visualization that allows you to have an overview of the documents. It's just not just about one document, it's about what are the places that are mentioned most throughout the documents that relate to my topic. What are the countries? What are the cities? And again, you can filter, etc. We have the same thing for persons. So you can see what are the people that appear really? What are the people in the context on the topic that I'm researching? Who are the main actors there? Who are the people I should be interested in? And gets the, their photos from the Wikipedia pages and gives you a really nice access to get more background information on them from Wikipedia, use them as a filter, etc. Then we have timelines, which is an overview of the temporal evolution of things, so you can see all the content that relates to uh, your topic of interest along a timeline, so you can see when things happened, how things evolved, navigate through there, and again get background information from Wikipedia right related to, to what you're dealing with. There's social media also, so we analyze tweets, we have polarity detection to know what's being said, what's good, what's bad. You have the um, timeline, so you get a really quick insight into the temporal dynamics, so you can see when a topic was really hot, where you have to dig in more to get more <laughs> insight. And as a last step, you can use everything you have there, the different visualizations, you can use them right in the editor to prepare your article for publication. So that makes it really easy to have a pretty complete workflow from starting to write 
to pushing it out to the newspaper or the blog or whatever. Then, next thing, it's not just for journalists. This platform also is used for TV viewers by providing background information. And so, while you're watching the news, for instance, you can have your cell phone and get uh, related information, quizzes, maps, uh, information no, from... I think I'm changing my mind. It's hard for me to believe that Hillary Clinton is going to be an anti-trade, anti-globalization person. She represents a set of people in Washington and in America who think that globalization is somewhere between uh, an inevitability and, or good for the U.S. on balance. Um, but I think on the Trans-Pacific Trade deal... Okay, so this is done all automatically by doing automated speech transcript. On that, we run entity linking to find the corresponding DBpedia pages, extract the information from there, get relevant information, generate uh, questions, quizzes, maps, etc., that are of interest, and present that to the user, synchronized with the original content. Then, okay, now a little bit of background. What do we need? We actually have, uh, starting with the crawlers, to get all kinds of data in there. So we have uh, videos, we have YouTube, internal archives, Twitter, newspapers. It all goes into MongoDB. It gets processed by tons of different analysis components that build upon one another. Finally push it out to Solar to make the applications work. The nice thing is you can find it pretty much all on GitHub. So if you're interested, you can actually uh, see it there. Uh, there's a wiki on GitHub also where you get some documentation. It's under an Apache license, so really friendly for use even commercially. And that's it. Uh, I finish up by pointing you to our website where you'll find uh, links to the demonstrators, to GitHub, to Twitter, etc. So you can get more information. And here on the left you see the seven partners that are involved in the project from France, Switzerland, Germany, Spain, and yeah, and thank you.